All right. Happy Thursday, everyone. Uh, today is an interesting day, and uh, I got some news about MidJourney. As I joined the community call yesterday, uh, after a while, uh, the call took place on October uh, 5th, 2022, Wednesday evening. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think there were like 1,000 people joining the call, um, 1,000 plus people joining the call. And there are some interesting news. Uh, first one being, you know, the developers saying uh, they're projecting like how many people might be using mid-journey in near future and the number uh, that came out of their mouth was 30 million. Yes, you're hearing that, right? It's 30 million people. Uh, now, as of now, there's still about 1 million people. They're still the largest group in Discord. And that discussion about the number of people that are gonna be joining the community is making, of course, them to think about uh, changing the UI a little bit. And maybe not a little bit, but actually moving, migrating the interface from uh, a Discord uh, interface to a web-based UI. And that's not a surprise uh, considering, you know, Discord is offering a limited, you know, interactivity and expansion for what the developers are trying to do. So one thing uh, about that development is uh, which way, which path MidJourney will take uh, in terms of the features that's going to, you know, offer to the users. So one big discussion is uh, that the, the users, especially the artists, want to have uh, more uh, control over what they're generating, what they're creating, especially in terms of composition, right? So I got that question a couple of times from different people asking, okay, what if I want to put something on the right side? What if I want to put something on the left side? What if I want to put you know, four of the same object and so on and so forth? And if you don't know it yet, actually you cannot clearly do that as of now in mid journey, right? So I also personally tested this. I didn't share anything. I received the questions, but uh, you can you know, prompt uh, where things go in the composition and how many of, uh, how many instances of something you want and mid journey is just being creative with that are not necessarily listening to your prompt. And there's an interesting offer that developers have or an idea that they have is uh, actually offering or generating more options to choose from instead of, you know, making the algorithm, you know, follow the prompt or instead of having a painting tool or marking tool, um, they want to, you know, generate, let's say, 60 options at once, a huge grid of, you know, uh, things that might be similar to what you're looking for. I think this is a pretty interesting approach, and I think it's a good approach as of now. The reason is, again, if I call the developers, they said they're afraid that if they have a blob tool to mark, you know, the composition, this tool is going to become like a Photoshop tool sooner than later. And actually, they don't want that, which is super understandable. And I'm with, you know, I support that idea. And uh, interestingly, you know, the claim there is instead of um, offering you more control over the canvas, if they make the software spit out more than four images, more than six images, as Dolly 2 does, and more than even 10 images, uh, they're saying, you know, you can get there faster. And I, I would go with that, right? So I, I, I really appreciate that, that idea and I would be a supporter of that kind of a solution. But that also uh, brings some problems. So I support that idea, uh, as I said, because, uh, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna enable you to kind of like come up like, approach to what you're trying to see faster, but at the same time, it's going to keep the surprise element. So this surprise element is really, really important. And I'm going to talk about it as I will talk about the biases and prompts uh, towards the end of this video. But let's go back to the challenges. So once you start offering more than four, six, whatever, however many images, uh, what developers are noting is this. Uh, you cannot, the Discord has limited expansion in terms of, you know, creating that grid within it. 
So that's why they're trying to kind of like come up with a way of, uh, you know, having this uh, web-based UI so you can see a large grid of images. That's done. The second thing, okay. So the question is, okay, you know, you're spending some GPU time already to generate four images. How long, you know, is it going to take to generate more? They have uh, they have some of the stuff already implemented, right? So they have a new algorithm, which they're claiming it's already twice, uh, you know, as fast as the new algorithm. So it's like twice faster. Uh, so you are going to see images really, really fast. And then uh, there's another another algorithm which is like uh, super robust and strong. So they are kind of like saying, okay, do you want to see things faster? Uh, you know, they're going to either use a method in which they're going to show you, let's say, eight to ten images in a faster way to pick, or there's going to be a something else which is taking you know like longer time with a larger grid. So again, I think that depends on what you're trying to do. And again, the developers are favoring the one that's generating more images, right? So I think the goal is the goal there is maybe saying, let's say 60 images at once, uh, and then kind of like working with that instead of seeing like eight, 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 or 10, 10, 10, and so on and so, so forth. So there's a question, a bit, you know, it, it's a bit of a question which one would be better. But I, I'm definitely supportive of, again, not controlling the canvas uh, immediately, but having, you know, options to choose from. All right. So uh, the, the next thing is maybe about like prompting and, um, and uh, biases. So I had a couple of kind of like uh, exchanges, idea exchanges and, you know, comments on social platforms and about biases. And some people said, OK, it's not biased. You are not able to write the right prompt. So that, that's kind of I find that amusing. Uh, obviously, uh, these people have limited experience of mid-journey uh, and limited, maybe a little limited understanding of like what you can do with prompts and what you cannot do. Uh, clearly, they didn't try, you know, the kind of like composition. They can try forever and they're they're not going to get a, you know, like a, a steady, constant result by trying that composition because it's not implemented in the algorithm. And clearly, already developers are saying there are biases in the algorithm because they are the ones who wrote it and they know the results. Uh, so it's interesting to get you know these kind of comments saying that oh the program is not biased you don't know how to prompt. Uh, unfortunately, like a lot of people know how to prompt, and actually those people who experimented by prompting who are saying things are biased know a lot, a lot more than the ones who are saying it's not biased. But what the, the point here is this. Uh, I think what is interesting about Mid Journey is you can prompt, you can craft the prompt, and it works up to a certain extent. But after that, that that certain percentage, actually, you are unable to control things. And the other side of the equation is this: you write a prompt, and you see, let's say, four options. The fourth one is quite different than what you're anticipating. And then, you know, you start building with it and then you realize that, you know, uh, that, you know, you realize something either about your prompt or you arrive at something which is super interesting with the minimal effort of prompting. So these are the nature of text to image tools because it's the surprise element which is driving as much as the prompt itself. So you cannot say that, okay, poor, I am the greatest prompter of the universe. Good luck to you. Because, you know, the, the algorithm is built in a certain way and it's growing in a certain way and it's being enhan enhanced in a certain way. And it's not based upon your prompting. So you have to realize that and step back and have a wiser and wider perspective to, to work with this tool. Okay. Uh, I think the other thing that I would like to say is, yes, I, uh, because the algorithm is so interesting uh, on the mid-journey side and because it's artistic, uh, it's doing some different stuff compared to other tools which have like in-painting, out-painting, you know, composing, composing, and so on and so forth, uh, or trying to be realistic all the time. And again, I think one decision the developers are taking there is uh, they want to keep it that way. And again, I am for that idea. I support it uh, a lot, uh, which is which is a little bit annoying for the uh, you know artists that are joining the the community call again. Some people want to have really like a lot of control on on mid journey, uh, and there was a like I, if I quote you know this 
some some let's say uh, discussion from this public call. Uh, you know, an artist said, "Okay, I want to have this you know control about the composition, and I want to do this and that, and I don't want to go and use you know other tools, other products because your product is amazing." And the nice, the great response from uh, from the developers was this. Well, you can actually, because we're not trying to solve everything for you, right? We want to keep the tool, the, the, the essential quality, the characteristics of the tool as is, because we, we think it's strong this way. And if you want to do something else, you can go and use other. I think that's a great, great approach to to keeping uh for for keeping the essential quality of mid journey right so obviously there are kind of people who are you know supportive of mid journey they're using it and there's some, some people who are more interested in dolly 2 people using you know stable diffusion and so on and so forth and i think there are reasons for that and just having this color like different spectrum of tools is really really useful for the creative people for designers for artists and uh, and I agree with uh, you know uh, if you try to solve everything you become this giant corporation, and we have them both on the you know graphics design side the giant corporation you know the name I don't have to give it and unfortunately we have these giant co corporations on the CAD side, computer aided design tools and after a while they become so big they try to do everything and their products are not that interesting at all after that while okay so uh. So with that, I think, uh, again, there are really interesting news. Midjourney is projected to have maybe 30 million people. New algorithms are coming. Uh, the web UI is being developed and probably, uh, by the way, uh, the developers are saying they may still keep the Discord UI for the you know power users who are experimental, jump into Discord, you know, keep doing what we are doing now, teach people and so on and so forth. And then you, you have the web UI extension for the for the larger community who just want to kind of like use you know uh, the tools that are available now. Uh, so that's gonna happen uh, soon. Uh, and I talked about the algorithms, the faster algorithm, larger grids and so on and so forth. So all in all, I think the space is getting heated. Space is getting super interesting. There's a lot also about uh, text to video tools emerging. Uh, text to motion tools are emerging. Now, if you haven't seen them yet, I can just put the uh, links for those in the video description here as well. Uh, and with that, I'm going to end it here. And hopefully I'm going to be back with some different subjects which are going to engage you uh, in terms of being creative, uh, keeping things innovative uh, and productive as well. So thanks a lot. Thanks for listening. And uh, if you like the video, please spread the word and I'll be back. Thank you.